what to do with this. Lisa, can you grab that? This camera knackered up. Yeah. I just need to hold it, that's all. My name's Jack, I'm with Luke and Dom, this could be our performance. 14th of July, 1941, Cockroom Station. Hi there. Yes sir. Yeah, you get us with the next time. Well the shit went down for all. You should have seen what it did for the city centre. Turned it into a complete nightmare. That's what you expect though, isn't it? Those bloody Germans. They have no remorse. Yeah, but at the same time, we're just about to run. How? Well, Shoot them, this war. Yeah. At the end of the day, mate, we're just punch bags of this war. Us workers have to deal with this. Stupid. This war is utterly I'm giving up, I swear. Well, it's not like you're fighting anyway, is it? My son went out there. He came back, not physically scarred, but mentally. Look, sorry, I didn't know. How is he? He's holding him by the skin of his teeth. I'm sorry, I didn't know. You know, I had to stop him doing the other night. What? Doing something stupid. Just, just don't think about it. How can you say that? Well, look, we've all got it back, just as well as you know. Sorry, I'm so sensitive. I didn't realise. It's fine, just, just stop talking about it. Sorry, I didn't know. Come on. Just, just leave it. Yeah, but the fact that your parents... I said stop. God's sake. I thought I was doing fine, but no, clearly you've just you've brought it all back, haven't you? Look, the best way to cope is to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Say it. I don't want to. Say it. I can't. Talk about it. Say it. I can't do it. Say it. Fine. My parents are dead. There. Are you happy? Station, the 16th of July, 1941. Hey there, Dom. How old enough? Tiring, but still surviving. You know, I've been working here for nine months. Never once did you crack a smile. Not even a grinch. <laughs> Lad like you were 47 from the war. Do you want to know why I work here? Do you remember what happened here, 14 years ago in Paragon Station? Yeah, the accident. Yes. Wait. What happened? <coughs> 14 years ago, in 1927, February the 14th, it was me and my wife's vacation in that last week, we were arriving back here in Hull. Happy, cheerful, coexisting with each other. It was the most beautiful connection we've ever had. I, by the time just before we arrived, we were relaxing and you know, but then just before we came back, Free signal, free signal men in the signal box. They had to attend to pull the lever to put our train to our stopping platform. The inquiry was that instead they pulled the wrong one and led our train in the wrong direction. And we never saw what was coming, never know what was ahead of us. And suddenly we hear the screeching noises, the driver started yelling. Then suddenly we see the other train, and boom! They collided into each other, like 
Like two bullets that hit each other in a crossfire fight. I was... I was out for some time. And I couldn't see my wife next to me or anywhere. I, when I woke up, I just felt groggy and was in just such pain. Even before I got up, the rescuers were there and they finally came to me and just pulled me out of that mess. And by the time they did, I got out of that tragic piece of I just, I had to find my wife. I had to find her and she, she was all right. And by the time I did, she wasn't breathing anymore. She was just lying next to the 11 others who are dead. And the 24 others, including me, just badly hurt. And I never got to say another word to her, not even a goodbye. Not ever again. But this is why I work now, you see, okay? And this is why I work here, to never let anything like that from ever happening again. Put your emotions on top. My friend was on that train. He was a cowboy. The driver threw him out. Before the trains could collide. That driver chose his life over him. My friend got to go home to his family. He never did, he had a wife, a child. Going to that funeral, seeing the driver's family. Sad. I'm sorry about your tragedy as well, Jack. Sad, you know, the war. All these bombs going off left, right and center. I'm afraid one of them's gonna come down on my house, kill me and my wife while we're sleeping. I'm a nervous wreck, I can't sleep. I was come here to work. I should have to do this. I know what you mean, but it's hard to cope, you know, like with my wife gone, you know. It is hard to cope, and you do feel lonely, and sometimes people like that can go insane, but with me, I'm only half a friend, you know. If you think about that, you'll end up in your house. We need to do something about it. Let the man know in that office that we mean business. Your wife died for nothing. All those people died for nothing. We should go on strike. Why should we have to work with these stupid trains? Jack, it might sound pretty decent to you, but going to that office is never going to change anything. It won't change my wife being dead. It won't change your friend being dead. It won't change any others. Look, Jack. Be sensible, okay? And don't do anything stupid, okay? Okay. You know what I mean. You understand? I know what you mean. Will the audience please mind moving over here to this part of the area, please? July 27th, 1941, 26th, 7th. All right, then, lads. I'm going to get going. See you later, mate. Goodbye. It's the last one I'm going to show it. Yeah. Sick of this evacuation business. It's the same going on, I mean. My sister told me what my niece has been through. Same here, mate. Messing my kids about. Why, what happened with yours? We've bounced around all sorts of places. Well, that doesn't sound very pleasant. Why? What happened? It's not good. Well, it started off in um, this place uh, near Ghoul. It was alright, it's just. Like, my wife's just so worried. She couldn't leave the kids alone. She sometimes got all the way to Ghoul on her own just to see them through the kitchen window. And you let her go and go on her own? Well, I didn't let her go. If I'd have known, I wouldn't have let her. After that, they went into a, the house of a Scottish labourer. Yeah. But they want a nice place. They said it was the filthiest place in the world. 
The only thing the man cared about was his bagpipes. The only thing that kept clean, loved it more than himself. Yeah, my niece, when she was in Bishop, uh, she was in White Farm. She said the streets were just absolutely stunk. They just let her stay in that place for like four weeks in such filth and disgustness. And Jesus, what happened after that? She eventually moved to Eton and she's all right for now. And she even sends letters to me. No, no, how she's doing. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. And what happened with your voice, by the way? Well, he ended up going to this place in Market Wheaton. It's like a nice little terraced house. Even had lads the same age as ours. That must have been pretty decent, having the same friends as the same age. It won't. Yeah. Uh, why? What? What went wrong? Well, well, for starters, they wouldn't look after our kids at all. Their kids would break our kids' toys. And then they wouldn't even let our play with theirs. They wouldn't even bathe our kids. I used to have to send the wife over to take them on a walk, just to clean them with her handkerchief, comb the hair, trim the fingernails. It was disgusting. They didn't even look after our kids at all. And you brought them back? Yeah, you're damn right we did. Could we let them, like, stay there? Sent them to um, this little village near Beverly. It was beautiful. How could we let them stay in Hull during the raids? I don't blame you, pal. I really don't. I'm just so scared. Not for myself, but for my kids. It's not knowing what was going on. It's a real horror of this war for me. Sending two most beautiful things to me out and not knowing what was happening. Well, what was it like when your boys came back? Do you? When they came back, it was amazing. For a moment, I forgot there was a war going on. Thank you for watching.